pregame show. Welcome to 2K Sports, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kenny the Jet Smith. Tonight, it's the Memphis Grizzlies as they'll be playing against the Houston Rockets. And for Houston, they're sitting at 500 over the last 10 games, kind of treading water. They'd really like to make a splash over the next few games. I'll tell you one thing we've seen uh, during this grit and grind era in Memphis is that they are tough in the postseason. What is it, Kenny, about the Grizzlies' style that makes them so dangerous in the postseason? They're just physically taxing over seven games. Could you imagine just someone leaning on you for 48 minutes? That's what the Memphis Grizzlies do. That's what makes them tough and hard to defend and play against. Well, the playoffs are naturally a little bit slower in tempo, and the Grizzlies, that's their style. You know, that's how they play. You know, Big Z, he's older now, but he's a, he's a monster on that blizz knock. I mean, it's, it's, it's a situation, isn't it, Kenny, where – some teams have to adapt to playoff basketball. The Grizzlies basically play it all year long. Yeah, certain teams adapt. Certain teams have to just continue. They just continue. This game uh, about ready to tip off. Let's send you to Kevin Harlan for the call. Rockets are looking to defeat their Western Conference rival. Going into this game, back to the road tomorrow as this is the final game of the Grizzlies' homestand. And of course, Matt Barnes. Team moving on here without him. Kevin, I thought he was really an important player for them. Undervalued and not given the credit he deserved. That's not to say the trade was a mistake, but I think they'll miss him more than you might expect. You know, chemistry rise, I, I agree with you, Clark, because he was a, a glue guy. You know, he's a guy that kind of held things together for them in a few areas. And so not having him around might take some getting used to. So Memphis will get the first possession. Here's the starting group for Houston. Everly and Harden, they're the backcourt. Nene is out there with Monte Yunus, and it's Ariza in at the small forward position. Nobody near Parsons, and no good his first shot of the night missing. And guys, James Harden much criticized for his defense a couple seasons ago. I really felt like he was dialed in at that end, and he has improved mightily over that season. Here's Randolph, and it is flushed down with a nice jam. And gobbled up that rebound and went straight into attack mode on the putback. He, he is one of the most determined rebounders, Clark, we have got in the NBA. Yeah, you're calling it right, Kevin. I mean, he gets so many second-chance points because of how hard he works to get to the rebound. Now here's Conley. Nene able to get his shot. And speaking of Harden's defense, remember that internet video a couple years ago, Clark, that compiled a lot of his lapses at that end of the court? It was embarrassing. Yeah, it was embarrassing, but sometimes you get caught on candid camera and it's motivation for you to get better. And I think that's exactly what happened with James Harden. Rockets have gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. First quarter, about a minute and a half in. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Beverly. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Yes, Kevin. I was able to catch up with the head coach for the Rockets just a moment ago. On his mind, the difficult task of defending Zach Randolph. He said Randolph's especially tough because he's not only a go-to scorer on the low block in the pinch post, but also a guy who can pick up a lot of second-chance points with his work on the glass. He's a 20-10 and double-double guy for a reason. We'll have our hands full trying to slow him down. Guys, back to you. And thanks for that story, Doris. Here's Nene after the basket by Tony Allen. Here's Bonnie Yunus. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. There they go, finally able to drop one in on their fourth try. Here's Conley. He's coming off a 10-point game against Oklahoma City. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Tony Allen. That is his first foul of the game. Oh, great defense there. Anticipated the play and got there first. 
And not afraid to put his body on the line either, Greg. He took a shot for the team in that situation. Rockets have gone just one of four to get this game started. Harden outside. Uses the glass to finish the layup. It's all knotted up. And he's starting to get what he wants here early and often. Nice move. Beverly against Connor. He feeds it to Randolph. Off the pick. It's rebounded by Houston. They're moving on after the tough loss they took at the hands of the Blazers. And it wasn't just about the bad shooting. It was really more so about the bad offense. They just didn't execute well. The screens were there. The spacing was poor. And thusly, the defeat. Well, you've laid out a couple of the details that lead to good offense or bad if you don't execute them. Shooting is just a byproduct of not screening well and not moving the ball or players well. They didn't execute anything on the offensive end. And so here is Houston following the score by Memphis. Ariza pass it to Nene. Houston moving it around. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Harden. And that one comes up a bit short. The defense needs to play tight on him, and that's exactly what they did to force that miss. Well done. Randolph, a screen on Ariza. And Trevor Ariza is going to pick up a foul here. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, clearly he had an established position there. Yeah, and, and I, I like this call because you want the refs in that situation. If there's any doubt, err on the side of giving the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. That should have been a block, and it was. It's all no good. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. Ariza has the open look. Hits it from three-point range. You know, Dave Yeager, the coach for the Grizzlies, has really become a big-name coach quite quickly. You know, he's worked his way up the Memphis coaching ladder and has had a ton of success early on in his career. You know, they've scored several times already here in the first quarter down low. I like that. And it's like a running game in football. When you can pound the basketball inside, it also allows you to control the team's transition. Here's a reason. After the made shot from Zach Randall, that's to Harden. No one near him. Gasol with the rebound. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. Conley kicks to Parsons. And off against Beverly. Does not score with that shot. It's his second miss against two made shots. Shoots from 14. And Monty has the basket on the assist by Beverly. Beverly's got three assists tonight. Memphis has gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Stolen by Beverly. And here we go. Beverly heading to the hoop. Drops in the breakaway layup. Beverly's got his first points in this one. That's how you make an impact with defense. Once the steal is made, you know they're going to be scattered. The floor is open. Take care of business. Always an advantage when you can get out in the open floor. You get much better rhythm offensively. And this lead, I think, is headed up. Here's Conley following the score by Houston. Beverly with the ball. And uh, right now he's averaging about seven points a game. <laughs> Quick hands on the steal and then just mad hops on the slam. Great sequence for them defensively and Clark offensively. Well, one usually leads to the other, Kevin. That's just good aggressive attacking basketball at both ends. Here's Randolph. And that one's good. Randolph's got six. He's having quite the quarter here, guys. I mean, shooting the ball extremely well. Beverly against Hunt on the wing, Harden. The dish to Nene. Shot clock at six. Here's Beverly. And another three for Houston. Really good job of creating just enough space to let that one fly. And continuing to expand his arsenal last season, Patrick Beverly, the guard for the Rockets. Career highs and assists and rebounds per game, and he's one of the smallest guys in the floor. Yeah, and, and he's really working on the details of becoming a better playmaker, becoming a guy that has 
coaches trust him to handle the basketball in those crucial situations. So timeout called here. The first for Memphis. You know, talking about Beverly, his wrist injury really changed things for the Rockets at the end of last season. Suddenly, 37-year-old Jason Terry had to take on big minutes at the point, and he was serviceable, but they missed Beverly's toughness on defense particularly. Going with the new group. Houston with a big group substitution here. Capella's checked in. Anderson comes in for Monty Unis. Michael Beasley, he's checked in for Trevor Ariza. And Gordon subbed in for James Harden. The Grizzlies trail by six. And going back to the one thing with Patrick Beverly, his shot could still be more consistent. Last year, he was down in shooting averages across the board, including just 38% from the field. It, it makes it very difficult on your offense when you have an inability to space the floor. And he gets the bucket. It seems that every pass they make is leading to a score here. I mean, that's just exquisite ball movement. And that's because the ball is looking for the best shot, and it's really paid off for them during the run. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. And so far for P.J. Hairston, nothing in his basketball career has been easy. He played at North Carolina but was suspended and never reinstated. Then he played in the D League well enough to be drafted in the first round last year. But unfortunately, his strong play just didn't carry over into his first full season in the NBA. No good on the free throw. Talking about Harrison, his rookie year last year was a disappointing act. He played Clark only 45 games at around 15 minutes per game. And, you know, what did he do with those minutes he got? He shot 32% from the field. Not great. He's got talent. There's never been a question about that. Now he's got to hone it. And the Rockets making a change here. Brewers checked in. And he's good on the second. Boy, the Grizzlies had a good shot at winning their division last year. Ended up only one game behind the Rockets at the end of the season. A tough pill to swallow for them. Now, here's Brewer. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. And listen, sometimes even the best of us are going to miss the easiest of opportunities. Here's Adams. They trail by seven. Hairston, a screen on Gordon. And Adams gets to Green. In the corner, right with it. And he goes in for the jump. You know, he might be small for a center, but it doesn't really matter because he can jump out of the building. Houston's gone 2-2 two two from three-point range here in the first quarter. And for the Grizzlies, it would have been their first Southwest Division title ever last year. They remain the only team in the division to not win it yet. Houston won it last season. Yeah, and they only went 9 and 7 last season within the division. That was still the best in division record in the Southwest. Every other team went 8 8 or 7 and 1. 5 to shoot. Three. Excellent deed there from Beasley. Oh, you, you've got to be able to deliver when you get a bunny like that. That's just too easy of a shot to miss. Gordon with no one around. Gordon with another miss. The Grizzlies trail by five. Green up on top. Here's Adams. Anderson with the block. And that'll be Memphis as it goes on a bounce. Grizzlies retain possession. on the shot clock. Memphis moving it around. And he gets it to go. Tipped away. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Grizzlies will take it. And a moment now to look at the numbers for Gordon. Averaging about 16 points, three assists, and three rebounds. And he brings that offensive firepower to the team. Scoring just comes naturally. And, you know, defenses are throwing everything at him. Yet he's still able to put up points. He's really unstoppable. 
So it's the Grizzlies now. It's a three-point game. They come into this one following a loss to the Thunder. Yeah, and that was a night where they just didn't seem to be the type of team that we've grown accustomed to seeing. I mean, it was more about them being individuals on the floor than the collective unit. Guys, I think it was simply a vacuum of leadership. Nobody really gathered the team and tried to rally them or pull them together. You know, that was most disappointing about the loss to me. Clark, Brandon Wright was moving all over the league last year, all over the map, traded twice, once from Dallas to Boston, then again sent to Phoenix where he finished up the season. Kevin, he was only with Boston for eight games after the trade. He seemed to find a better home when he was with Phoenix. He hits both from the strike. And for Wright, being traded twice, he's one of those players that, that is so efficient, but, but in small doses. So really the ultimate bitch guy to come in and give you minutes in the post. Anderson dishes to Gordon. There's the feed to Capella. Pulls it from the elbow. And the officials call over the back. A little too aggressive there. And that's an aggressive play to try to get the rebound. Just a little too aggressive. And unnecessary. That's over the top. That's doing too much, Greg. He wasn't in good position there, and he was never going to get the ball. He just wasted a foul. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Grizzlies will take it. I tell you what, that's just a major unforced error right there, guys. My goodness. Timeout called the Grizzlies. Grizzlies now. They trail by one. Dishes it to Adams. Kicks to right. Back to Adams. Just five on the clock. No good off the back of the rim. Rebounding is going to be the focal point for them in this one, fellas. I can feel it. Well, it always is, and it has been so far, and they've gotten a nice edge on the left. Stolen by Anderson. Here's Gordon. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Yeah, and with the offense getting right to the rim, at least they saved the layup. Old school D right there, just telling them no easy layups. It's as simple as that. And that's what you expect from them. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for the Rockets. Boy, they've really amped up the pressure at the defensive end, guys, and have piled up the steals in the early going. And also, defensively, they've been able to cause some turnovers tonight. And, and that also builds confidence and gives you momentum. And Gordon drops them both. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. Wright sets a screen. Drive by Adams. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. No question. He got bumped on that shot. Yeah, the officials didn't need to talk that one over. It was obvious. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. And, of course, we'd all like to see his percentage at the line improve, but he just does not have the touch right now. He's in the 60s. And I know he's got to be upset at himself for shooting so poorly at the line. Right now, gentlemen, so I would shot. think he'll be doing everything he can to bring those numbers up. Oh, 
The first free throw is good. The Rockets were terrific on the road last season, Clark. Tied for second with the Clippers for the most road wins in the league. 26 and 15, although if you want to get picky about it, they had one of those wins in Mexico City, so <laughs> maybe 25.5 road wins for them. <laughs> and so Adams nails both of them. And I do remember that Mexico City game last year for the Rockets. A huge turnout for them. It felt like they were the crowd favorites. Still, you can't take anything away from their road performances last season. And, you know, you think about the Rockets, as, as you mentioned. I mean, one reason they were so good on the road is their offense didn't miss a beat when they left Houston. When you can get to the line as much as they did, you remain consistent on the road. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. Well, looking back on last season, you didn't know where the Rockets would end up in terms of seeding in the playoffs. Ended up with the two seed because they won the Southwest Division. And as it turned out, everything worked out very well for them. It really did. And had a divisional matchup in that first round against the Mavs. But, but the Rockets took care of business in that series and would advance. to Brewer. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Gordon. And you know, for the Rockets, they had a major gut check in the second round. Went down 3-1 to one against the Clippers. Came back to win the series in seven, including game six, when I dozed off when they were trailing by 19 in the fourth and was shocked to wake up in the morning and see they had forced the seventh game. Memphis trailing here. Right, right side. Passes it to Harrison. Goes up high for the two hand dunk. Solid, solid work on the back end of that play. Yeah, finish hard with two hands on the stuff. Yeah, nothing extravagant, guys, but again, no need on that one. And with the Rockets last postseason, their trip to the conference finals was as far as they would go. Went out to the Warriors in five games. Most of them, though, close ones. I think most fans are pleased with how far the team went last year in spite of all the injuries. Six to shoot. Here's Anderson. The Rockets again can't hit. And the inside just a bit too congested for him to get the usual shot he would have with rhythm. Quickly check out the scoring breakdown here for the Grizzlies. We've seen a lot of their points coming off penetration in the first half. They've been distributing the ball really well tonight, too. I mean, a decent number of assists so far for them. Well, I tell you, the Grizzlies guys were really dominant in the first half of the season last year. But after the All-Star break, barely played above 500. And Memphis would end up going 16 and 13 over the back half of last season. Down the stretch, they would only go five up and five down in the final 10. Yeah, and, and Kevin, all those games, so important as they jockeyed for position in the West. It was so fluid and volatile down the stretch. Uh, they could have been anywhere from a second seed to a sixth on any given day. And they just happened to slump at the wrong time. Now, here's Brewer. Bryant so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Oh, excellent interior D to force the miss. His defensive ability is a big factor. I mean, there's no denying that. Here is Harrison. Some nice passing there by Memphis. Oh, and here we go with Gordon. Nobody back. Guys, Eric Gordon was an unbelievable three-point shooter last season. 45% from behind the arc. The first time he's been over 40% in his career. 
You know, we were talking about Eric Gordon. He's always had great range, but not always the great shot selection. You know, and that's a great point because, you know, we see now that he's starting to mature, starting to value every possession. And that's good news for the rest of that team. Andrew Beverly, he's checked in for Michael Beasley. He hits the second from the line. Really unfortunate for Eric Gordon that an assortment of injuries have really derailed his career. A few years back, he looked like he'd be an absolute star. Once a 22 points a game score, was down to 13 a game last season. Now, here's Adams. He's coming off a 10-point game against Oklahoma City. Right sets a screen. Off the pick. That one wide left. Yeah, on the topic of Eric Gordon, one would think he's still young and talented enough to be a difference maker with any team. He just has to stay healthy. That really is the bottom line. He's got to keep his health. Kevin, the, the truth is, though he's had a number of injuries, they, they've all been different. It, it isn't one chronic thing. So with a little good luck, we could see him shine once more. And Green now, top of the key. To the right side. Here's Hairston. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Yeah, the defender all over him. Greg, he got him good there. I mean, that's why the shot was so far off. He's made one and missed one so far in the game. Two shots. Shooting two. Shooting two. And he can't get the first one. No good at the strike this time. Second misses also. And that does it for the first quarter. Rockets lead by five. And we'll be back in just a moment with the start of the second quarter. And certainly an intriguing matchup tonight. Let's hear from Trevor Ariza on his team's mentality coming in. You're playing against a team that is very scrappy. You know, they want to win as well. Um, you got to come ready to play. You got to be ready for everything. And you got to be ready to uh, claw to get this win tonight. Ariza might as well be describing his own game, Clark. Scrappy, ready to play, ready for anything, ready to, to claw to get that win. Well, you know, he does have that kind of all-around, all-out game going back to his days at UCLA. I mean, when you combine that with his talent, um, he's a guy who, no matter where he's been, his teammates rave about him and respect him. And the first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And guys for the Rockets, what jumps out to you from a number standpoint? Really active hands early on here as they're able to acquire several steals. Well, they've really been aggressive guys on defense, and it's paid off, so why stop? Keep it up. Conley and Allen in the backcourt. And off is the four with Gasol in the middle. And it's Parsons in at the three. That's the lineup out there for the Grizzlies. Now here's Parsons. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against Oklahoma City. And he also looked to attack at the defensive end of the floor. Three steals in that game. And here's Beverly. After the three-pointer from Chandler Parsons, Beverly with the ball. Conley picks him up. A shot by Harden. Wide open. He hits through for a second basket. He's now two for six. It's got to be nice for them to know that game in and game out, his offense is going to be there for him. Quarter number two with just over a minute gone. 
inside. Allen at the screen for Randall. Harden grabs the miss. Excellent. Really solid job, actually, by the defense to get in his way as he was going up for that one. And the shot is good. And now an eight-point rocket lead. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. Here's Randall, and two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. It's on Monty Unis. And to nobody's surprise, Zach Randolph enjoyed an outstanding season, Clark, in 14-15. And, you know, ironically, by taking more of a backseat to front court, make Mark Gasol, Randolph played okay, better, the best rebound shots. rate of his Two career. Shots. That free throw missing. And, and for the Grizzlies, they had to be encouraged by Randolph's play after signing him to that extension. I mean, he'd been set back by the knee injury, but he came back in a big way. And he sinks the second. And Randolph happy to be back in Memphis. He said, this is home. This is where I belong. And look, he's helped establish his team as a power in the Western Conference. And for me, this is the right place for him to be. Well, that's inexcusable to throw a pass that far off the mark. Here's Conley. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. And we're about two minutes into the second quarter here. Here's Gasol. Some solid defense there by Nene. Harden with it. Now guarded by Parsons. And it's Beverly missing. Well, it looks like he's cooled down a bit after hitting those two in the first quarter. Conley, the pass to Allen. Conley kicks to Randall. Releases, and another miss by Memphis. Houston leading by seven. And they're pushing it up. Here's Harden, finished off the break. Harden's got four points this quarter. Another bucket in the paint. That's something they just have not been able to stop today. Yeah, the defense is all about disrupting timing and spacing, and, and what they've got going right now is not getting it done. Now here's Conley, who provides a good amount of offense for the team, averaging around 11 and a half points a game. Misses from close range. You know, he just hasn't looked right to me. A bit out of sorts, if you will. Something's off with his mechanics, well, at least as I look at it. Some slick passing from Harden on that one. Just call him the beer. James Harden, not just iconic, but also entering the conversation for the best player in the NBA. Now a timeout called by Memphis. And speaking of Harden and being the best, he'd certainly tell you so. He referred to himself as the best all-around player in the league. What do you think? And I think he's right in that category. A lot of people laughed him off when he said that, but he's been a legitimate MVP candidate. His defense has gotten better, and obviously his offensive game is off the charts. So it's both teams making substitutions here. The Grizzlies trail by 12. Feeds to Green. Land soft on the front of the rim and drops. Green's got his first points of the night. You always hear about chemistry. That's a perfect example, knowing where each other is at all times. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. Eric Gordon, he's checked in for Houston. Go 
guarded by Harden. Back to Adams. Down low. Here's Green. The Rockets pull it in. Capella's got three rebounds now in this one. To the inside. Here's Anderson. Before getting dinged up, Brian Anderson was rolling. I mean, over the first few seasons of his career, improved in efficiency in all areas. Then he had the back injury, and last season his shooting percentages really went south. Shooting two. Shooting two. And the first one at the line is good. And, and really, the Grizzlies might have dropped to fifth in their West in the final week, but they were near the top for most of last season. Often could be found in that two spot. The Grizzlies making a switch here. White's checked in. The Grizzlies trail by 12. To the middle, stolen by Anderson. They push it up, four on three. Harden, no good. The Grizzlies did slip late in the West, Greg, as you said. Still, you know, Park 35 and 17, that record in the conference was their best. And even more impressive was the fact that the Grizzlies played their best when playing the other top teams. They went 16 and 11 against the other Western Conference playoff teams. Grizzlies have gone three of eight from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. To the paint, here's Green. Score of the basket is third after five shots. I really like the fact that he's getting the touches he needs here after not scoring a single point in that first quarter. There's the pass to Capella. And he caught that pass in full stride on his way to the big slam. Boy, he threw out some punishment with that two-hand throw down. And hey, Clark, now's the time to do it. Continue to attack that rim. It's taken away by Brewer. Gordon dishes to Brewer. Gordon, the pass to Brewer. Back to Gordon. Goes back up. Parsons with the rebound. The Grizzlies trail by 10. Stolen by Anderson. And it's Houston on the break. Harden, that's good. And unfortunately, we've seen a few too many of those. A lack of concentration and alertness, a turnover, and an easy bucket the other way in transition. And really, a few more of those in this game could be over. And the Grizzlies with possession here. James Harden picking up that last basket. And Parsons kicks to Green. Here's Adams. Drops in the tray. Adams has got seven points. A wide open three. They need much better communication defensively. Harden dishes to Gordon. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got his third assist on the night. For Memphis, they've gotten exactly half their shots to go down here in the second. Five of ten. On the wing, Green. Whoops, they pick off the pass. Here's Capella. On the wing, Gordon. That doesn't go either for Gordon. The Grizzlies trail by 11. Now, here's Adams. Right, the pass to Adams. From 13. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. Two. In a season where everyone in the Southwest made it to the playoffs, you just knew it was going to be a war of attrition night in and night out. Still, the Rockets managed to come out on top in the division. And the Rockets were just eight up and eight down in the Southwest Division. But, Clark, they won the out-of-division games they needed to in order to take the division crown. Exactly, and it was a tough year to do that because the division was so tough. It was actually the first ever Southwest Division title for the Rockets. Good on the second free throw. Rockets leading by 10. To the middle, here's Brewer. Rebounded by Hairston. 
That's really too easy a chance to miss, guys. He needs to be more aggressive and focused on his finishes. And Capella sends it back. And Brewer kicks to Harden. They set the pick. Hairston with the steal. Fast break, Memphis. Here's White. And he jams it with authority. And he doesn't really matter. He starts the break with how he runs the floor. He seems to always be the one who finishes it. Yeah, he is so fun to watch and how he attacks the rim at full speed like that, man. It's, uh, it's something to behold the way that guy gets to the rim. So it's the Rockets now following the score by Memphis. Harden takes to Capella. A second chance effort, and that's two points on the layup. Capella's got his second bucket of the night. And the defense just gets caught standing around that time and giving up the second chance opportunity. You know, that just can't happen. They need much more effort than that on the glass. Now here's Adams. He's got seven, and Capella sends it back. Now Harden. Here's the screen. Takes a three. And it's Gordon missing. Boy, from my angle, it looked like it was in the bottom of the net. Looked good from here. Yeah, I'm about as shocked as you are, Clark. Pass to right. He kicks it to Green. Memphis moving that ball around. No good from Hairston. You know what? He's just stone cold right now. Really not sure if he's their best option offensively as they try to get back in this game. And they've looked terrific in transition today. That's had a lot to do with their success. Boy, it certainly has. I mean, they've done a really good job recognizing any time they've had the numbers advantage, and then they've taken advantage. We've seen it time and time again here. And the basket by Gordon. The Grizzlies trail by 14. They really want to find that igniter here. Yeah, that's right. They, Kevin, the offense has basically been running in place. They got to get going. Here is Harrison. Adams dishes to right, and it's going to be a three-second call. And now let's take a look at the most efficient scoring teams in the NBA. The Rockets, number one. Are just tremendously disciplined offensively, always looking for the best possible shot. That's how they've gotten that field goal percentage to skyrocket. Now a timeout called by Houston. This, of course, their first opportunity to play Memphis this season. And we saw how competitive and entertaining the season series was between these two terrific teams last year. Exactly. They split the series, Greg. Two elite teams and conference foes renewing that rivalry tonight. checked in for Capella. Maniunas comes in for Corey Brewer. And it's Patrick Beverly in for James Harden. It's Beasley on the wing, covered by Hairston. Nene with the screen on Allen. The dish to Nene. Five on the clock. There's a screen by Modi Yunus. And it's Beverly missing. Now we know the Marcus Hall was one of the most sought after free agents this past summer. Clark all along most figured he'd be back in Memphis. Yep, the winning team, Max Dollar. And don't forget now, he went to high school in Memphis while his brother Powell played there. He's where he belongs. Marcus saw a first-time All-Star starter last season. He and his brother Powell both starting in that game. The first time that's ever happened in league history and having both those guys go head-to-head. -head. Oh, listen, there, no doubt you could argue Marc Gasol is the best center in the league right now. I mean, this guy does it all. Defends, rebounds, passes, 
scores. I mean, he's also a great teammate. They all love him. And to me, that matters in the big picture. When you're talking about developing chemistry and trust, sometimes the difference between winning and winning it all is whether or not your teammates like you. Now, here's Monte Yunus. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Ariza kicks to Nene. That one off the back iron and out. The Grizzlies trail by 12. Gasol passes to Conley. Good, and the assist goes to Gasol. Conley's got four points now in the quarter. How about the way he's able to angle his body to shield the big fella off and still get the finish? You've got to be clever with your sleight of hand when you get inside and try to finish against the bigger guys. And he made it he, he made it look easy that time. Here's Beverly. Michael Conley making his last shot. Jordan and fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. And when you watch him play, Clark Marcus Hall is so unselfish. A tremendous passer in the pivot. Still, for the good of the team, he's becoming more aggressive and looking for his shot. Exactly. I think you've seen a major bump in his rate of scoring while still maintaining right, his efficiency. That put him in the MVP Two conversation shot. for sure. Got free throw good from Gordon. And Marc Gasol, despite his scoring increase, still led all centers last season in assists. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. And, you know, and, and Marc Gasol equally comfortable operating at the elbow or the low block. I mean, they love to run their offense through him at the elbow because he's a triple threat, can shoot it, drive it, also a wonderful passer. And really, he and Zebo deadly with that high-low action. Tremendous chemistry. And Zach Randolph gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. One twenty-two left in the second quarter. And Beverly kicks to Nene. Right at the free throw line. Hits the front of the rim and out. And, and you know, coaches just love players who they can count on to give that effort defensively. And he clearly is one of those guys, Greg. We saw it right there. Nice work forcing that miss. No good from Hairston. I can't figure out, guys, what's going on with him this quarter. I mean, he hasn't gotten one shot to drop. Beverly dishes to Ariza. And out of bounds as the Grizzlies gain possession. Forty-six seconds left to play here in the half. Beverly against Conley. Allen right side. Adiunas grabs the miss. Adiunas has got his third rebound on the night. Here's Ariza. That doesn't go either for Ariza. Yeah, but you have to love that tough interior defense. And, Greg, that's exactly what he gives you. I mean, he's constantly making his presence felt around the rim. And Bullseye with that assist. Nice delivery there in traffic. Beverly against Conley. Nene, the screen. Gordon outside. The shot is off. Here's Hairston. He got it up that time, but it wouldn't fall for him. And so that's the end of the first half. Rockets ahead, leading by 10. Live from the FedEx Forum, you're watching 2K Sports. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Well, two quarters down, two to go. Welcome back. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kenny the Jet Smith as we start breaking it down for you. Houston found themselves in a close game in the first. At one point, they managed to push out ahead to an eight-point lead. In the second quarter, they imposed their will on the game and built a ten-point lead at the half. And if things continue to go the same way after the break, they're threatening to run away with this one. What do you think, Shaq, about the first half we saw from the Rockets? 
Well, they really dictated the pace of the game with their transition game. They got out on the break every chance they had, and the time they could push the tempo, they did. And a lot of times, it kept the defense scrambling like eggs with the cheese and apple juice. And now, Kenny, let's get your opinion on Memphis. Well, look, they turned the ball over way too much. You can't do that in the NBA. Teams are just too talented. You can't give them that many possessions. Don't give away the entire game just by giving up an extra few possessions here and there. These guys need to come with more precision in the second half. All right, that is going to wrap up our halftime report as it's just about time for the start of the third quarter. And the third quarter about ready to get underway. You look at Patrick Beverly. He's been playing really well. Yeah, he's playing just a smart game overall offensively. Looking for and finding the gaps in the defense. And also, terrific shot selection. Greg, that's exactly what we're talking about when we talk about being efficient as an offensive player. Fully on display there with him. Houston leading by 10. Well, we've got a moment. Let's set the floor. Brought to you by Gatorade All Fueled Up for the second half. So on the floor for Houston. Harden and Ariza filling out the perimeter. Aniunas out there with Nene, and it's Beverly in at the one spot. Well, Memphis loves the grit and grind mentality of this Grizzlies team. We, we all know that. They are at their most fearsome, I think, right here in the grindhouse. No, no doubt about it. Some names just stick, and, and everyone here knows when you say grindhouse, you're talking about the FedEx form. Memphis so strong in this building. No good on that one. Well, I tell you, last year, guys, the Grizzlies lived up to the nickname of the Grindhouse. Top five defense here at home and a lot of close wins that could have gone either way, but they grinded them out. And the second free throw, good. And those close wins... And that blue-collar attitude is really what helped Memphis get to a 31-10 record here at home. I mean, good for second-best home record in that very tough Western Conference. Now here's Parsons. Back to Allen. Conley kicks to Randall. Taken away by Nene. Here's Harden. And that one is stuffed right through. Such a strong finisher on the fast break. And, Greg, I love the fact he's always in control. Even though he's going at breakneck speed, he still maintains his body control. And that last replay, courtesy of Kia. Here is Conley. Following the score by Houston. Randolph a screen. From 11 feet away. Nice spin off the left rim and in. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Ariza. And with the break in the action, let's look at the stats for Gasol. 7th in blocks, 12th in rebounding, and tremendous confidence and consistency at the foul line. He ranks among the top 15 in free throw percentage. And you know, his ability to patrol the lane is a difference maker for that team. Exceptional timing and anticipation. Here's Conley, following the basket by Mark Gasol. It'll go. The rocket lead is cut to just 9 points on the basket from Zach Randolph. Conley against Beverly. He dishes it to Harden. Hands it from downtown. Harden's got 14 points. He's been one of their more reliable options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this lead. Picked by Randolph. Takes it out to Parsons. Takes the three. That's good. Six points for him. Three for three, and that's always a good way to start the second half. Beverly, the pass to Harden. Inside. And Monty Yunus with the basket on the assist by Harden. Harden's got his fifth assist in this one. And we're just around two minutes into the final half of play now. Conley kicks to Randall. The Rockets pull it in. Ani Yunus has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Yeah, but they're three of four to start the second half. Houston leading by 11. And here's Harden. 
14 points for him. And, and that fourth foul, guys, might force him to scale back the aggression from a defensive standpoint. He does not need, nor does the team need, number five. Number 14. Here's Monte Yunus. Six points for him. Ariza outside. Puts it up from 12. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. That's his first personal foul. Well, guys, before last season, Trevor Ariza signing a four-year, $32 million deal with the Rockets. Big right, free agent get for the team. Take a break. And, you know, they wanted to re-sign Chandler Parsons, Kevin, but with his departure, in comes Ariza, and Trevor is a quality replacement. I mean, a terrific wing defender, and he's a nice spot-up shooter as well. And he knocks down the first one. And, you know, you compare their games. Ariza a bit more limited, maybe, offensively than Parsons, a few years older, but he's also a better defender and, and also better at playing without the basketball. And remember, you got five guys out there, only one ball. Sometimes your chemistry can improve when a guy doesn't need the basketball to be effective. And, you know, for the Rockets, a nice pairing with, with James Harden and, and Trevor Ariza. Ariza, a spot-up shooter and defender, while Harden arguably the premier offensive creator in the league. I mean, they really complement each other well. Now a timeout called by Memphis. It's no secret, Clark, what this Houston Rockets team wants to do. They want to get to the line, drive the lane, and hurt you from outside the arc. And they'll do it all at a very fast pace. I mean, they're fun to watch. The pace is something that I think sneaks up on teams mm -hmm. sometimes, Kevin. Good point. Just under two and a half minutes into the third quarter now. And no doubt the Rockets were one of the faster paced teams in the league last year. When you have the firepower they do, you want it to become a scoring fest. And here we go. Fast break. Beverly's got it. And he gets it to go. 16 points for James Harden. And after his last game, really not surprised to see him as hot as he is here tonight. Conley against Harden. And Parsons gets to Gasol. And he goes strong with the one-handed jam. And really nothing like a good old-fashioned throwdown to get a team going. And Greg, they do need to get going. They wouldn't mind you know, shaving a couple more points off that lead right away. Well, if the defense keeps giving up easy baskets like that, it won't be a lead for long. Green, he's checked in for Zach Randolph. And then for Houston, Capella's checked in. And it's Anderson in for Trevor Ariza. The Grizzlies trail by 13. A lot of the wins for the Rockets, guys, I thought last year came from just wearing down their opponent. I mean, you can keep up with their pace for a quarter, maybe two, but it's very hard to sustain it for 48 minutes, shot for shot. Houston's gone to the three-pointer 11 times tonight, nailed five of them. They double him with Green. Brewer with the ball. He feeds it to Capella. Lock at six. Let's it go from 11. And there's Ryan Anderson on the assist by Beverly. And the Rockets lead by 13. For Memphis, they've gone five of six so far from the field in the second half. Tremendous efficiency. Here's Conley. He provides a good amount of offense for the team, averaging around 11 and a half points a game. And it's Houston on the break. Here's Brewer. Hammers it home to polish off the break. 
Well, he's just dangling from the rim after sending it through there. You can see which team now has the swagger Clark right now. Yeah, it's exactly. It's with them. And, guys, that swagger can backfire because you don't want to get your opponent a little too riled up. And so it's Memphis with it. The Rockets making the shot. Gasol dishes to Green. Hits some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. Green's got 10. And the shooting has really been there for him today, but he may have to take it upon himself to continue to carry this team and try and get out of this hole. Capella, and it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. He'll shoot one more at the free throw line. Some changes here for the Grizzlies. Wright comes in for Mark Gasol, and it's Adams in for Mike Conley. And guys, what do you think about the offensive approach we've seen so far for the Rockets? Fantastic passing. We saw it in the first half, and it's carried over here in the second. They haven't wasted time getting the ball up the court tonight either, and it's resulted in a lot of fast break points. Now here's Parsons. Six points for him. That's an example there, guys, of contesting the shot and corralling the board. That's really all you can ask of a guy at that end of the floor. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And the second player taken in the 2008 draft, Michael Beasley out of Kansas State, has been the ultimate wild card. Incredibly high expectations for him. At one time, he was the best high school player in the country. But now, you know, Greg, in his eighth season, He's bounced around a little bit. You wonder if he will ever fulfill that great okay, potential. You know, shots. you could argue he's the two best shots. player in college that one year yes. at Kansas yes. State. I mean, unstoppable scorer and, and rebounder on the collegiate level. And, and he's shown flashes, but that's the one thing about this level. So much of the game is mental. And not everybody's equipped to handle the responsibility of being a great player. Excellent play. That one misses. And thinking about Michael Beasley's career now, he did have a breakout season in 10 and 11 with the Timberwolves. It was enough to land him a three-year, $18 million contract with the Suns a couple of years ago. Arrow seemed to be pointing up, but then things headed south quickly. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. And for last season, it was really just a victory for Beasley to get back in the league. I mean, did not start the season on any team. No doubt he has the skills, but something needs to happen for him in order to stick. The Grizzlies have made nine free throws in the game. 14 attempts. First one falls for him. Free throws, good from Green. Some outstanding numbers in this one for Green. 12 points, and he hasn't forgotten to get his teammates involved either. And he's conscious, I think, Clark, of, of good ball movement. It needs to be a part of their game plan throughout. Now here's Beverly. 10 points for him. That's good. And this collapse we've seen by their interior defense, it's really the reason why they've struggled and are in such a hole. Takes it into the teeth of the D and converts the way up. Hard to get that one off with the size difference there. That makes it a tough individual matchup for him, especially down low. Well, took on the big guys going in there and challenging them like he did. But, boy, that was a nice job. Yeah, I think he just sees some things that can be improved and wants to get everybody back on the same page. And usually that, to me, is a good use of the timeout. I mean, if there's something that he's noticed that can give his team a lift, I think he's got to try to take advantage of that. Timeout called the Rockets. DJ Harrison's checked in for the Grizzlies. DJ Harrison. Here's Beverly. He's got 12. The layup missed. The Grizzlies trail by 13. And Adams gets to Hairston. Beasley with the steal. Brewer, the pass to Beverly. And there's the feed to Anderson. 
Beasley against Green. A floater, and it's Beasley laying it in. Beasley's got his second bucket of the game to go. These defenders look overmatched right now, especially inside. Well, they've given up 10 of the last 12 points from close range, so I'd have to agree with you, partner. So it's the Grizzlies now. 15-point game. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got seven rebounds in the game. Hairston against Beverly. It's rebounded by Memphis. One-on-one -on -one here. Finished off by Hairston. Even when they're down, he's still looking to do the spectacular. From, and he pulled it off. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe this is the best time to do it. I, I agree. I mean, now's when you need a spark, something electric to get your teammates fired up. Now here's Beasley. Here's Capella. And count it. Two points with a chance for one more at the free throw line. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now, Greg. They've allowed from point-blank range. Can't happen. Grizzlies making a switch here. Allen's checked in. And then for Houston, Maniunas comes in for Michael Beasley. And it's Gordon in for Corey Brewer. The Grizzlies trail by 16. Rockets are known for their offensive prowess, and rightly so, Clark. It's not just the barrage of threes that do teams in. They get to the free throw line. Well, they've got a group of guys that understand how to create and sell contact. They were second in the league in free throws. Here's Beverly. The Grizzlies making the shot. This is to Gordon. There's a screen by Modi Yunus. And here's Anderson from the arc. And he gets it to go. Anderson's got seven. Yeah, it's such a sweet three-point stroke there and it can really open things up inside because as good as he shoots it it forces the opposing bigs to have to step out on the perimeter now here's Adams nine points in the game so far Allen dishes to Adams stolen by Beverly and it's Gordon that time on the assist by Beverly 11 points for Eric Gordon and with their hot shooting here in the second half, their field goal percentage over 50% now for the game. Yeah, it's not a surprise then to see them out in front the way they've been efficient offensively in this half and actually throughout the entire game. Here we are in November. Let's see how things are shaking out in the West early in the season. You look at Houston. They're right now in the eighth spot of the conference here in the early part of the season. And of course, there's the Grizzlies. They're looking to salvage what they can of the season. And for the Grizzlies, they haven't made any of the strides they were hoping to see prior to the season. Again, hanging around at the bottom of the standings. Yeah, it's full makeover time now, guys. I'm sure they've learned their lesson that this roster is not one that can sustain any kind of success in today's NBA. And the first one at the line is good. A good game for Wright. He has eight points, and he's managed to get four of his points by way of the free throw line. And, Clark, that might not make the highlight reel, but those are important points nonetheless. Zach Randolph, he's checked in for Green. Houston also making some changes. Nene, he's checked in for Capella. Lisa comes in for Anderson. And it's Harden in for Patrick Beverly. Now, here is Harden. He's got 16. Kicks it to Ariza. This one for three. It's rebounded by Memphis. White's got his fourth rebound in this one. No good from Hairston. Houston leading by 17. Four on three as they bring it up. Unloads from nine, and Wright pulls it down. Wright's got rebound number five here tonight. Drive by Adams. Pass to Randall. With the hook shot. And he can't bank that one in. And now, here comes Gordon leading the break. It's hauled in by Adams. Even though he isn't having the best of game from the floor, it hasn't seemed to hurt him. Allen left side. The Grizzlies with another miss. 
Houston's gone past the three-point line for 13 of their shots, six of 13. Tell you what, guys, his size really comes into play when there's a rebound battle going on. He's got an advantage in there. Here's Hairston, and foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. It's on Nene. Oh, a perfect half at the free throw line for him. That'll help their comeback effort for real. And Clark, those free throws need to continue if they're going to get back in this game. All right, now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. The first free throw is good. And some changes here for the Grizzlies. Marcus Gasol has checked in for Wright. And Mike Conley is subbed in for Adams. So he picks up just one from the line that time. Well, I tell you what, Nene is a man among boys down low. Remarkable physical power. He's also got a tough mentality about him. Just a real rugged individual. Now Conley. James Harden missing on the three. And he gets it to go. And it's six points for Mike Conley. So far, going for more of an inside game here in this second half. And I like that. A little smash mouth basketball. Taking it inside. And getting back to Nene, an obvious inside player with great impact. He looks and plays like a, uh, a man possessed. Yet through last season, Greg, he's never averaged as much as eight rebounds a game. And, and you know, his true value is measured in, in intangibles at times, not, not just on the stat sheet. He does all the dirty work so others can shine. And Gasol sends it back. 109 left in the third. Here's Hairston. And the rejection by Hardman. And that's out of bounds. Memphis will retain possession. Chandler Parsons, he's checked in for Hairston. Down, 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 Mark. 105 left in the third quarter. Randolph. Good, and the assist goes to Gasol. 11 points for Zach Randolph. They've been getting it inside at every opportunity and getting results, too. Yeah, that's a winning formula as far as I'm concerned. They've been the aggressors and far more assertive on the offensive end. Stolen by Randolph. The Grizzlies trail by 10. Outside Conley, down low. Here's Gasol, stolen by Harden. 29 seconds left in the third. Pass to Yunus. They set the screen. Shot to end this cold run. Offensive rebound. The shot by Nene. No good. Allen drives in. It's stolen by Ariza. And now here comes Gordon leading the break from deep three-point work. Time. What a shot! <laughs> Three points at the buzzer. Definitely an answer to prayer there. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. Rockets lead by 13. Live from the FedEx Forum, you're watching 2K Sports. And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. The Grizzlies trail by 13. Randolph is the four with Gasol in the middle. Conley and Allen in the backcourt. And it's Parsons in at the three, the small forward. That's the lineup in the game for Memphis. Houston's gotten the three-point shot off 16 times tonight. Seven times they've hit it. Nine times they've missed. Ariza with it. Conley picks him up. Feeds to Beverly. A three ball. No good. And Memphis the other way now. He had six points from long range in the first half, but nothing's fallen here since. Allen up top, defended by Beverly. 
Gasol is done. And so here's Memphis. Just five on the clock. And Parsons gets to Allen. And it comes off the front of the rim. Rockets leading by 13. Harden right side. Shot from 12. That drops. Harden's got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for the Rockets. And for Memphis, they're shooting reasonably well, 45%. Outside Conley, it's Allen on the wing. Out to Conley. There's the pass to Allen. Six to shoot. Beasley with the steal. Beverly, the pass to Harden. And here they go. And Conley gets it to go. The assist by Allen. Eight points for Mike Conley. Well, that fast break went according to plan. Yeah, nice job there, Greg. Recognizing the opportunity was there to push it, and then excellent execution. Now, here is Harden. Nene, the screen. Beasley dishes to Nene. No good off the back of the rim. Oh, tough D on the inside. It sure was, Greg. No easy access to the basket when that fellow's in the middle. And Parsons kicks to Randolph. Back to Parsons, pulls it up. And it's James Harden with the rebound. Harden's got four rebounds in this game. Fourth quarter of play, and we're about two and a half minutes through it right now. Beverly wide open. Good, it's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got six assists here tonight. The Grizzlies trail by 16. Conley, the pass to Randall. Memphis moving it around. Kicks it out to Allen. The shot is off. Good D by Ariza. Houston's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Everly with the ball. Conley picks him up. Harden kicks to Beverly. Here's Nene. Gasol with the defensive effort. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Really left alone that time. And it's nine points for Chandler Parsons. Boy, I tell you what, he loves getting looks like that from the three-point line. No one near him. That's a warm-up jumper for him. Now a timeout called by Houston. And Chandler Parsons, boy, he can really give you a whole lot of everything. Length, quickness, skill, he can shoot, pass, rebound, defend, the total package. And back to Chandler Parsons, his versatility is so valuable to any scheme. We've now seen that from both Houston and Dallas. He gives you percentages and good production every time out. He does, Kevin, but the, the one area where I'd like to see him improve is his physical strength. I mean, to take his game to the next level, He's got to be able to play through contact a little bit better. He, if he can do that, we're talking about a guy who could be a perennial all-star. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Yes, guys. Over that break, I was able to catch the message Houston's coach was giving to his team. His advice clear-cut. I want to see you playing to win, not playing not to lose. I don't care what the lead is. We do not back off. Rockets leading by 11. Now, here's Beverly. Harden outside. Anderson a screen on Allen. Shot clock at six. The Rockets with another miss. I tell you what, folks. I bet he won't miss that shot next time he takes it. Parsons on the wing. Defended by Beverly. And there's the call on Patrick Beverly. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, that's a tough call right there, and, and really a tough break first for the D. Ball. Greg, no problem for me with that call. I mean, he was still sliding right there. Now off the inbound. This all no good. For Houston, they've gone just two of eight in this fourth quarter. The final quarter not treating them well so far. 
And the shot's good from Nene. He hasn't really done much on the offensive end, but he's worked within the team's concept to help them get the lead. He's done some other things other than scoring to help his team get the lead here. There's been a change in his game compared to what we saw in the first half. I mean, he's scoring with a lot of confidence now. It's Harden with the drive. Stolen by Allen. And here we go. The Grizzlies on a fast break. Green dishes to Allen. Pass to Conley. He kicks to Gasol. That's in there. Conley with the assist. Conley's got six assists in the game. That's their third straight make off an assist. <laughs> Great ball movement. Beverly against Allen. Beverly the pass to Harden. The dish to Anderson. Off target from outside. Yeah, but the defense was determined not to give him an inch of free space. Parsons. Here's Allen. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. He got a great read of where that miss was going, and that allowed him to be the first guy to it and get the putback. Now Beverly. He dishes it to Hart. Nene, the screen. There's the triple. A reason or what? The Grizzlies on offense. They're on a 13 to 5 run here. Allen kicks to Green. To the inside. Here's Conley. And the layup's good off the glass. Now just a five point Houston lead. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting in the paint and keep scoring points. Keep it going. Not a lot you can do as a defense when they keep getting the ball in the paint like this. Now here's Beverly. Left side Anderson. Four on the shot clock. On the high post. Harden's shot is off. Memphis has gotten fewer than half of their three-pointers to go down tonight. They're four for nine. And Parsons gets it to go. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. Yeah, they have really owned the interior. You've got to collapse that defense and force them to beat you over the top. They get it again. Anderson can't get it to go. Yeah, but you have to love that tough interior defense. And, Greg, that's exactly what he gives you. I mean, he's constantly making his presence felt around the rim. In second, personal foul. At the line from your Grizzlies, Jermichael Green. Two shots. Shooting two. Shooting two. Free throw drops for Green. You really have to like the work they put in at the free throw line here in the half. I mean, they've been really aggressive and drawing fouls, and then they've been able to knock down their free throws. Monty Yunus has checked in for the Rockets. Both shots good from the strike. And here's Beverly. But Eunice, that's a screen for Beverly. He feeds it to Nene. It's Ariza on the wing. Six to shoot to the paint. It's stolen by Green. They definitely hit that groove offensively. They sure have, guys. I mean, really aggressive. And I like that posture in mind. Stay aggressive. Yeah, Great, you like groove, don't you? I do. That's groove tonight, Kevin. As a matter of fact, let's just stay in the attack mode that we're seeing from these guys. They're getting whatever they want. <laughs> On the units with them. And Allen picks him up defensively. That's good. And that's 20 points for James Harden. Here are the Grizzlies with the ball. They're on a 19-7 run. Conley dishes to Allen. Kicks it out to Parsons. 
Gasol passes to Allen. They double him with the name. In the corner, Parsons with it. Just trying to shoot. That doesn't go on the chance to tie. Rockets leading by three. Here's the floater. He muscles it in through the contact, and they call the foul. And he's on his way to the free throw line. is checked in for Memphis. Like last season, we saw Moni Yunus make some nice strides. Yeah, a big uptick in his scoring efficiency, Kevin. And both his shooting from beyond the arc and from within the arc increased. Now here's Gasol, taken away by Nene. And here we go, Harden heading to the hoop. Finish off the break. Harden's got nine points in the quarter. Guys, they didn't waste that fast break opportunity. Good aggressive pass to get his teammate to the rim. I love it. Here's Allen. That's in there. Conley with the assist. Ten points for Tony Allen. Nothing too fancy. Just simple execution. That's getting the job done when they need to make every possession count. Completely agree with that, Clark. They need stops and, and really can't afford any wasted possessions. Those inside shots are nice, high percentage looks. And that was a difficult shot from mid-range simply because the defense was engaged. Yeah, and I think the quickness of the closeout really threw him off. Now here's Allen. Randolph draws the double. Lock at six. Conley for three. And the Grizzlies get it back. That's good. The Houston Leaders cut down to just four points with a bucket from Zach Randolph. And there's no quit when it comes to battling there until the final whistle. What a putback. Everly with the ball. Harden outside. Shot on the wing. Again, the miss by Harden. Not sure what, what the B was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can bill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. You know, to cut deficits, you got to be making smart basketball plays out there. Taking care of the ball. It's not done by hoisting up bonehead threes like that one. Yeah, enough scoring on the inside there. I think it's time for him to send a message to his team. Yeah, you're exactly right. I guarantee you this talk centers around cutting down on all of those points coming in the paint. They've got to show more resistance there. Timeout called the Rockets. They're up by four. And there's a minute 45 left here in the fourth quarter. It's leading by four. Nene into the lane. And that one's good. And those are two teammates right there working in rhythm. One setting the screen and the other using it to get that separation. Now here's Conley. Back to Randolph. Kind of Yunus with the steal. There's 126 left in the fourth. To look at what Beverly's been doing. 15 points and 13 assists. As successful as he's been inside and outside, it's posing some serious matchup problems for the defense. You know, when a guy's having such a complete game like he is today, um, fellas, he, he, it's really the most difficult type of guy to try to defend because you don't know what to take away. So he can't get either to fall. Kevin, it's disheartening to see them keep missing opportunities to extend the lead at the line. I mean, when you have a chance to put a team away from the line, you want to take advantage of that. You don't want to give them a chance to come back on it. A good look from Harden. Offensive rebounding, and the whistle blows. It's going to be on Michael Conley. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. Oh, no. Not the guy you want to put on the line, Kevin. He's an ATM from the free throw line. All right, now. Take a break. Take a break. And he cannot get the first one to drop. Tough one to miss.
No luck that time either. Nothing seems to be going down for him today. Shot no good. Houston's gone into a funk from downtown in the fourth. Only one of their five three-pointers has found the bottom of the bucket. There's the bucket. Good. And the Rockets lead by eight. Yeah, heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the basket. Out of bounds, Houston takes possession. And, and that's just carelessness there. I mean, you have got to have your head in the game. Fifty seconds left in the game, and the call will be against Chandler Parsons. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus. We'll go to the line to shoot two. And that hurts as he doesn't get the first one to fall. Trying to focus now on the second. No one that time either. The Grizzlies on offense. Trailing here by eight. James Harden with the rebound. Well, he's building a house with those bricks. I mean, one reason is he keeps trying to force it up when he's defended well. Move the ball. Share the sugar. Just look at how quickly the lead has grown here over the last few possessions. Clear case here, partner, of saving their best for last. Quite a run. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. Cannot get the first one to drop. Tough one to miss. And the second of two is good. That brings them within single digits. And it's Houston's ball. They're on a 13 to 5 run here. The shot and game clock separated by four. And Brewer kicks to Godlock. Five on the clock. Let's it go. And off target as he starts the game 0 for 1. Adam missed. So Houston wins it. A solid win on the road for them. This building was dead silent by the time GA this one wound down. And that's what you want to do. Take the crowd out of it by crunch time. Don't give them any chance to lift their team up at the finish. And now we'll send it down to Doris Burke, who's standing by courtside. Well, congratulations on this win, James. And did you feel like the chemistry tonight with how the team continued to get you the ball made the difference in getting you into your rhythm? Yeah, I uh, just, just stuck with it. You know, teammates kept encouraging me. I just kept moving the ball, like I getting shots. Um, they did a great job of looking for me. It inspires great confidence when your teammates believe in you guys. Thank you, Doris. Great interview once again. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. And now time to go to Ernie Johnson, who's alongside Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Hi again, everybody. This is Ernie Johnson, joined by Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Time now to present our Jordan player of the game, Patrick Beverly. He was a powerful offensive weapon tonight, scoring a double-double with points and assists. And that was the catalyst for this victory. It's not too often you see a guy crack 15 assists in a game. That's how in tune he was. Just great anticipation, great understanding of every defense that they threw at him. Exactly the kind of game a team wants from its point guard. I love the contribution he gave with his long-range shooting tonight. He was on fire. That turned out to be the big key for them. If someone drove the lane and the defense collapsed, they would always kick it to him for another three. Splacka Katayao! And that brings us to the end of our broadcast for this evening. For Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Harlan, and our illustrious 2K Sports crew, this is Ernie Johnson saying good night, and we'll see you again soon, but not soon enough.